thanks for bringing me and thanks for pushing me to do a, a talk on something I'm not usually talking about. I usually talk about sexual ethics and my sexual ethics curriculum. Um, but in that curriculum, there are two lessons that are on uh, sexting and pornography, and I wanted to update them. And so, so let's say that your brilliant son asks you, well, isn't this all correlational? Doesn't it mean that people already incline towards impersonal attitudes or sexism or rough sex choose that kind of porn to watch where people like me will only watch the good stuff? Well, you can say that actually this year some research came out that pitted those two theories against one another. There's no evidence to support that uh, pornography consumption and sexual behavior relationships are due to pre-existing sexual attitudes. The analyses uniformly support that uh, sexual attitudes link pornography consumption and sexual behavior, which means pornography consumption does affect your attitude. Nobody would argue against that. Attitudes affect what you're going to do sexually. Okay. So what if you have a brilliant daughter who says, um, what about feminist porn? Well, um, uh, porn producers sell what they do as feminists because they're saying, and they call some of their producers and some self, you know, call themselves feminists. I'm sure Stormy Daniels calls herself a feminist now too. Um, a little bit more on that in a minute. Um, but they call themselves feminists because they highlight that it's consensual and that they're legitimizing all desires after centuries of women's sexuality being suppressed. Okay, but legitimizing all desires, um, what you can see that she thinks that they may involve producing images that seem oppressive, degrading, or violent. And it's still feminist because it's legitimizing that women too might have the desire to um, you know, be um, degraded. In <coughs> so, just being careful about what you call feminist form. You probably want to hear what I have to say about Stormy Daniels, even though I, you know, as a Democrat, I'm supporting what she was doing um, out there. I heard her on Bill Maher last Friday night, and he asked her, why? Why did you have sex with him? And she looked to me like every traumatized, um, sexually abused client I've ever seen. She said, I don't know, in that kind of blank stare. And he said, really, but why? And he asked her several times, why did you have sex with him? And she said, I don't know. Somebody who's had sex so many times and who's portraying sex as a feminist or porn as a feminist thing, who became a producer of porn, which is one way that women get out of the sort of uh, degrading aspect of it is that they can then take advantage of other women. And, and there are reports that, that women felt they were very abused on her um, sets that she was the producer of the porn. I mean, to me that says it all. You don't want your daughters not knowing why they have sex with somebody. You know, she, it, and it's pretty clear. He was a powerful person. He wanted to have sex. She's had sex before. I don't care. Maybe that's not the most ethical way to go about doing it. And of course, she did feel probably degraded. Because porn industry depends on degrading images of women, and that's where the racism comes in, and the and the um, uh, the spitting, the gagging, the calling of names of women. And that it's really um, can't call itself sex education or feminist as long as it continues to include in mainstream imagery all the aggression. And so. This is the next thing you need to say to your child. Have you said that ever? <laughs> no. But you do, um, because it's, it's everywhere. It's like in every ma Cosmo-type magazine, every glamour magazine, they'll pick up, you know, this sort of how, how to do it and why it's so popular and what's going on. But the research is showing that basically there's a climate of coercion around uh, anal sex um, and consent and mutuality aren't always a priority, that um, women say they're responding to external pressure to accommodate to male fantasies, 
or internal pressures to be sexually normal, because it's now normalized, um, just as um, screaming and you know carrying on like a porn star is like a performance like that is normalized in a sex act. I learned that from my college age um, students who talk about unsatisfying sex where they're pretending to be like a porn star. Um, and in uh, their research with um, these in-depth interviews with 20 young women, I think it was in New York, a quarter of them had violent encounters with um, anal sex. So, um, you know, on the one hand, if you're a liberal parent, you're kind of like, whatever pleases you and it would be good. But the idea that, that this isn't an equal environment between boys and girls out there today, where people mutually get together and one person says yes, then that's all you need is consent. That you know, people are trying to accommodate, trying to conform to what they think is normal in their experimentation. And um, what's normal today is what they're seeing in pornography. Um, 